All right, so we are in Software Inc. And this is gonna be a tutorial for new players that are struggling to create their own software and make that economically viable. So I'm gonna jump straight in here and we're just gonna start a new company. Uh, we'll just start with June Sims that they've given us over here. Of course, the character editor, this is really cool. There's a lot of customization options available here. This is all cosmetic, so I'm not gonna change any of that. And we will just be, uh, let's, Go through a couple of names here. Silver Studios, that'll be us. Um, and then a couple of things. So if you're starting out for the first time, definitely I would recommend just going for the easy mode. That'll give you a bit more starting funds. It gives you a bit more specialization points to play around with and just makes things a little bit easier in terms of how much money you're going to make as well. I'm gonna pick a couple of traits here for her. We'll just go for big brain. It doesn't matter too much what you're picking here. Um, th these are sort of the neutral traits. I'm just going to go for I have a watch that doesn't actually do anything. And then uh, we will go for Neat Freak because I tend to keep the environment pretty clean anyway. So that shouldn't really affect us too much. Now, other stuff that we want to do, uh, since most likely our founder is not going to be working on service tasks, I am going to reduce the skill here and just boost the rest of them. So lead, programmer, designer and artist. And we're probably going to work on 2D software to start with. So we'll make her really strong on that. I can give her one point here on audio. And then let's make her strong in terms of system and at least audio design and programming. She's not going to be that strong on audio art. But um, I don't think that's going to be a problem, at least for the type of software that we're going to have her focus on. And hardware, when we eventually get to that point, we can hire somebody to do that. Now, in terms of leadership skills, uh, let's see. HR, uh, we're going to be doing this ourselves. Actually, let's give, let's give some skills in every area here and see what we can max out. So automation, socialization. Um, well, actually, oh, actually, if you play on easy, you can just max out all of these. I didn't see that. So we'll just do that. Um, and then in terms of service, this isn't really going to matter all that much because she's not going to be doing these. So it doesn't really matter. Um, the especially marketing, initially, we're going to just outsource that because marketing is quite expensive and you need staff for that. We're not going to have enough money to do that. So I think that's all good. We can jump straight in. And we're not going to try to go to an empty plot or any of the bigger offices. It makes a lot more sense initially just keep your costs as low as possible um, and just work with as little as you can. You can always easily expand later on. So we're going to go into the build mode here and we'll just turn off the walls so that we can go straight in and create a bit of office space for us here. Now, some of this stuff may not be available to you because you have to unlock it if you haven't played this build of the game. Like for example, this chair is something you can unlock, but you can just take the executive chair as well. It doesn't matter so much. I'm actually probably over specking this office right now, uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Um, we'll give her a tablet since that can do a couple of things, but it also gives a big boost on art. Uh, I can put a plant here. Let's just do that. Get some, maybe like a lamp in here as well. That helps the environment. Uh, we can probably going to need a bit of extra light, I think, to get to where are the ceiling lights? Let's put like a ceiling light in there and there as well. Uh, something else that's useful to have is the bookshelf. Um, where is that? It's over here. So we'll get one of those in here. Now, something you want to pay attention to is um, if the Lux is at 400, that's the maximum that you can get. So that's good lighting. All of these things will help productivity. Environment, 200% again is the maximum that you can get. Temperature, 21 degrees, that's where you want it to stabilize. If it's above or below that, it can start becoming an issue. Because we're leasing, I think they've already taken care of the heating and air conditioning and all of that for us. Um, and then of course there is acoustics. So you can improve the acoustics of the room. Uh, now I've unlocked stuff like the acoustic foam, which really helps with this. But if you don't have that yet, you can just place more stuff in the room as well. So if I take, for example, a couch and put it in here, you'll see that that actually also increases the acoustics and we'll just keep going. We can put like a plant in here. Uh, we wanna use the clock because you get a buff for that as well. Um, can maybe put a painting in the back there and 
We still need something else. Well, we may as well just put a little bit of acoustic foam in here as well, since we do have it. Perfect. And now this is kind of the ideal room for our founder to work in. Uh, now on day one, for some reason, they don't actually come in. So maybe day one is just like the first month is just for them to set up the office and sort everything out. And we're going to skip straight into the next month. Now, one thing that you'll notice immediately is that it's incredibly easy to make money with contract work. And, you know, that may sort of beg the question, like, why would you even develop your own software if you can make this much money with contract work? I could have stopped that a long time ago um, because you, you basically just need to do what I've just done. Uh, just create the minimum product here requirement that they have. But uh, the thing is that over time, as you build up your business, you will make a lot more money creating your own software, but that's not going to be the case initially. Initially, it is much easier to make money with contract work. And if you're still sort of finding your feet on creating your own software, it is a good idea to do this just for a couple of months. Uh, to to just have some money in the bank and make things a little bit easier on yourself. Um, it's actually like unrealistic how much of this we can do within one month. I'm not even doing this particularly efficiently right now, but um, I mean, it's hard to believe that a uh, random software developer that have presumably just started in the 80s would make this much money off of contract work. Uh, you'd have to be somebody pretty special. Uh, but let's let's give our founder the benefit of the doubt here and assume that she is just a incredibly good software developer. Okay, we are literally taking every job here and completing it. Of course, if you play on the um, harder difficulty settings, it, it won't be quite this easy. Okay, so we've kind of done all the contracts here and I think that 114,000 should be enough for us to create our first software package. Um, so we're gonna do that, but uh, yeah, okay. So uh, we'll, we'll just let the rest of the day pass because one of the things that's gonna happen here, so when we start this software is we're gonna get a deadline because we're gonna make use of a, of a publisher. Now, the most important thing, a couple of things that you need to know if you're going to design your own software, and these are easy mistakes to make, stay away from stuff that takes a long time to make. Like this operating system, we have not even added any features to it, and it's already telling us this is going to be approximately two years. If you're a one-person development team, that doesn't make any sense. A 2D editor takes less than a year for not adding any features to it, which unfortunately we will have to. Office software as well, less than a year. So, Actually, I think the 2D editor is a really good thing to start with. Uh, we can, uh, we'll just call this picture pro. Um, and then you kind of need to add features in here, but you don't want to add so much that you, you won't have enough time to actually do it. So you want to get some interest. So if we add like raw image support, that already takes the interest up to 29%. Maybe we have text rendering. Now it's up to 46 uh, image effects, it's up to 71. I, I think this is probably enough for now. At least we don't have any wasted interest. We don't have to get to 100%. Um, we only have one person here. They're recommending that we have a lot more. Uh, but we're going to get around this problem by just not making the software particularly good. It is our first try anyway. So, And the other thing that we want to do is get a publisher. Now, a um, couple of things, you can get funding from the publisher. In this case, they'll give us about 56,000, which considering that our first version of the software may not sell that well, maybe we should take that. Um, in, in later versions, getting 56,000 and, and giving up 14% of the royalty is probably not going to be worth it. In this case, it may just be worth it. So we're going to take that payout. Uh, ultimately, they're going to take 40% because they're also going to do the marketing and the printing. Now, the area where we will really benefit is the marketing because the publishers will do an insane amount of marketing to the point where your product's actually running at a loss. And it's only much later in the game that I think it's worth doing the marketing yourself. Uh, but we'll let them take care of all of this for us. So we're going to get a publisher payout here. And I think that the rest is all fine. Uh, yeah, I think we can just go ahead 
They are saying that the size of our team that we've chosen is small, but we're trying to keep our costs low right now. So we're not going to worry about that too much. And we can either do one or two iterations here. I don't know if it matters too much for the first version of this software. I think we are actually going to go for, we're just going to stick to two iterations for this one. We definitely, you don't want to be doing more than that on your first software. Uh, because we're using a publisher, because we have to have this out by September 1981, we will not have time to do any more than that. So we can sort of push maximum two iterations here, which is what we're going to do. So we'll just let her keep going on that. I have to say for somebody that's starting a company working from eight to four, I think is what it is right now is not bad. Uh, that's pretty good hours. You usually hear when people are founding like a software company or something, they're putting in like 12 hour work days, but uh, we seem to be taking it pretty easy. Um, all right, so we're almost done with the second iteration here. And as soon as it, that's done, we're going to start development here. Now she's quite good on the artwork and there's less work to do on the art. So that seems to be the thing that's getting completed quite quickly and sort of first. At some point we may want to bring in some temporary staff to clean this place up and just service the computers and everything as well. Um, but yeah, we still, we're still in July 1980. We still have plenty of time on this particular piece of software. So I think I'll let her keep working on this until the end of August and then we'll get a review done. I know in terms of the code, it's still pretty early days, but um, it is a good thing to just get uh, an outsourced review and iterate on this. So we are going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so yeah, some issues with the code, but at least now she knows she knows what needs to be fixed in terms of the alpha. And we can go ahead and iterate. So this will put this will put her progress back a little bit as she's sort of fixing stuff that wasn't great in the previous version. Um, let's also get some as soon as she finishes this work day, we're gonna get the cleaning, maintenance, and IT supports in here to just clean up and fix whatever needs to be fixed. Now, the thing is, we're never going to get the code to 100% in this case because we have a one person development team. But this is what you've got to remember early in the game. Done is better than perfect. There's no point in trying to make the software perfect. Your software company is extremely unknown at this stage anyway. So even if you have amazing software, it's not going to sell well just because your company isn't well known yet. So there's really no point in creating perfect software. You just want to get something out there and your next version will be better. But what we do want to make sure that we do is as soon as we get this released is we want to support it well so that we can get the maximum sales and awareness out of it that we that we can. So we're going to keep going here for a bit. Let me just think if we need to release in September, I would think that by the end of March, we should probably promote this into the beta version and start fixing bugs. So we'll, we'll keep going for a bit now and then we'll have a look like how well we're doing on the sales and if we need to maybe bring somebody in to work on the support. In fact, I think we, we probably will need to bring somebody in to work on the support. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. Um, because if, uh, if history has taught me anything, it's like usually you'll get enough sales that you probably can't deal with the support by yourself. Plus I haven't given her any sort of skills in that area. So yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll let her continue working on the beta until the end of March. Uh, let's get the cleaning in here again. She's actually done fairly well. Like this is a, this is fairly close to finish, but it's okay. We can promote it. You don't have to have everything at 100%. Like I said, done is better than perfect here. 
uh, and now she's just working on fixing bugs. Now, of course, she won't be able to fix all of them, and as with real life, even if you work on the bug fixing for years, the uh, your customers are still going to find stuff that you wouldn't have been able to find, so that's okay. But the nice thing is our expenses are extremely limited, like we're not really burning through a lot of cash right now. And it means that even if we make a little bit of money out of this, uh, it'll be enough um, to keep us going for now. Okay, so that's May done. So we still have June, July, August, and all of September to work on the bug fixing, uh, which will hopefully mean that it will be a fairly decent product by the time it comes out. And this is also where you can see that the estimate that the game gives you in terms of how many people you need to have working on this, it isn't necessarily, you don't necessarily have to worry about that too much. Also keep in mind that much like with a real business, the more you expand, costs can sometimes sort of go up exponentially. Uh, you have to think about how the team is structured and you need to have a leader for the team. Right now, she's just a one person company, so I don't have to worry about a lot of that stuff. Yeah, it's going to be about two more months of bug fixing here, and then we will actually release this software. So at the end of September, I think I'm just going to bring in the staff here to service the computer and everything, just to make sure that when this releases, we are ready to start dealing with the support for this. And if it looks like we're going to have to offer a lot of support, um, then we might get another person, like just a cheap resource to come and help us out a bit uh, so we release this yeah let's see so yeah it gets about three stars that's about as much as we can expect but nobody knows who silver studios they don't really know who we are so uh, that's not going to help us and that's why i said like there's really no point in trying to create perfect software initially um so we already have 2,000 active users, which, you know, of course, if we compare that to what the other companies would be selling, I'm sure that is nothing, but this is just our first software. We're just getting started here, so we'll take it. Um, yeah, so you can see uh, we have sort of the giants here that have, uh, what's the name of their software? Where do we actually see that? Oh, it's this one. Yeah, so this is like the fourth iteration already, and of course, you know, Quality is better. They've probably got a lot more features. It's selling for a lot more. So we can't really compete with them, but we're just breaking into the market right now. Um, so we'll let her come in and deal with the support queue here. Well, she's just finished doing that so she can actually do an update as well. And we'll just let her continue doing that for the rest of the day. Okay, so I think this is fine. We'll, uh, we'll finish the first update, but I do think that it's gonna be better if we can maybe get somebody to help out a bit here. So we're gonna lease this little room as well. And let's build in another little piece of office space here. In fact, we can, just in case we need it, uh, we'll just cre create like two pieces here. So, um, okay, let's get some computers in. Actually, we don't, yeah, I think we have enough money that we can just go ahead and furnish both of these. We'll put telephones in here if this is gonna be a support space um, because it sort of buffs um, service. And what else do we need? Uh, need some light in here as well. We can get some chairs. Uh, get them some plants as well. And since this is a small space and they're going to be using phones and everything, they probably do want some cubicle walls. So just get these in here and over there just to give each employee some privacy. For now, we're just going to hire one person. And then, of course, uh, let's just see how this is doing. Like, yeah, this room looks pretty good. Um, we can also get them. Is there space for a bookshelf in here? Maybe. 
I always forget where that is. It's this one. I think they should still be able to squeeze past there. Give them a clock here as well. Uh, yeah, that ought to do it. So there's a little support space here. It's not much, but it'll do. And then we'll just have to go and hire this person. So, well, actually that's gonna mean that we need another team. So we're gonna add the support team in here and we'll hire one person for that team. So this will be service, support, no secondary role, low salary. Uh, we can't really afford to run like a really expensive support team right now. Um, let's see what we've got here. Fast learner, hypochondriac under the weather. We don't want somebody that's gonna be sick a lot, modest. Yeah, I think, I think this person should do got two stars on support they're kind of perfect for this role we don't we don't need that much right now so we're gonna hire this guy uh, now the other thing that we need to do is we need to designate these rooms so this team will be this room will be for support and then this room will be for our core team but we need to allow pass through otherwise the support team won't actually be able to get to that room so let's see how this goes so right now both support and core will be taking tickets and then I think core we'll be releasing the fixes that we need. We definitely don't want to miss tickets. Okay, so we have more active users. We're still making money. That's a good thing. This guy's come in bright and early, already working on some support tickets. And then the core team uh, will work on an update here as well. Now that we're getting more support tickets coming in. And as soon as it gets to a point where the support team can deal with both the tickets and the updates by themselves, I can actually get the core team to start working on the second version of the software. So we'll finish this and again tomorrow. So we're still making good money. Now this is really important because if you don't support the software, your sales are going to drop off really quickly. But what we're doing now by sorting out all of these tickets and updating the software as these tickets are coming in, is we're really maximizing our sales. So we're just gonna keep going here for a bit until, like I said, it, it becomes clear to me that I don't actually need the core team to support. Okay, so how many do we have? 43. We'll spend one more day letting the core team support this. We're making a decent amount of sales here. So you can see, now again, you may have been able to make more money over the same period of time of contract work, but as you start to gain a reputation, as you start to get better at, at doing these, uh, that's no longer gonna be the case. Yeah, I feel comfortable that after January, the support team can deal with both the tickets and fixing all of these bugs by themselves. So that's done. Uh, we finish this one and then from next month core is not going to help this team and this team will have to work on the updates themselves so that's fine uh, and we go into the next month so we've got about 38 we've made a we're making a decent amount of um sales here so I think that's fine. Uh, but the next thing that we want to do is we want to start working on the next iteration. Now, I'll probably end the tutorial after that, but this is basically just setting you up so that you can get into the next office. And what I'll do here is sort of, we'll call this part two of the tutorial is how to make your first SQL. And after that, I'll show you how to expand and set up in the next office. But anyway, we're going to make our SQL now. So you're going to go to original IP. Well, first you want to select the type of software that you've made, which in our case is a 2D editor. Go to original IP. We select Picture Pro. You can trade that, but we're not going to. We're going to use it to make a SQL. And this will just be Picture Pro 2. Actually, I'm going to bring down the price a little bit. We'll sell that at 50 just to make us a bit more competitive. Now, if we want to, maybe we can add in another feature or something here to increase the expected interest but I don't know, let's just see what we can do here. Like if we do, is there anything that will give us a, a good boost on interest without wasting interest? It doesn't look like there's a whole lot. So no, we're gonna stick to what we have here and we'll just hopefully do a better job. 
Um, this time we're not going to take the funding from the publishers so that we get a bit more royalties. We'll probably get more sales, but we'll still take their marketing and printing. Um, let's just look at what we can do here in advanced. So this is the, okay, this is the 2D editor that we're using. Uh, that's fine. Uh, we can look at, let's see what happens if we go for auto balance. Okay, this is already auto balanced. We'll just keep it as it is for now. Yeah, so there's not too much that we need to change here. It's okay, we don't have to mess with these settings uh, too much. We can also create a framework for this, um, which we can then use to develop or speed up the development for future projects. I would advise actually doing this, but we're not going to do it right now. The other thing that you can do is you can get a server for uh, source control management. Um, we don't have space to put this right now. Uh, this extra room that we had would have actually been a good place to put that. But that kind of thing, again, uh, these are all things that you can start bringing in later on in the game. For now, we can make do without it. It's still telling us that the team is quite small. We know that. Uh, okay, so we're going to... This will be the first day where the support team is going to be... This guy's going to be on his own. and We'll just see. He's managing. He's coping with the support that um, needs to be provided. By the way, this is a mistake that I've made in the past, is to try and get to the sequel too quickly and leave the support team without support from my core team, basically. That's not a good idea uh, because if you fall behind in terms of supporting the software, you're really shooting yourself in the foot in terms of the, the number of sales that you can get and I'm assuming your reputation as well. Uh, so we're going to keep going. This one needs to be uh, released in July 1983. So we still have quite a bit of time. Again, we're going to let her work on two iterations here. And the support team seems to be absolutely fine no problem keeping up with the support tickets and doing the updates so again we'll push that update and have them work on another one we should probably get somebody in to clean up and, and fix stuff up here as soon as well i feel bad for the support guy this is not the most interesting job since uh, he's spending a lot of time just sitting around waiting for stuff to come in but uh, such is life, I guess. Uh, when you've got your first jobs, you kind of have to just work with what you've got. Uh, she is going to get to finish the second iteration of this design in this month. And then we can continue to develop the software. So we're in May. We've got more than a year. Which is really extremely good at the artwork. Well, it's also because there isn't as much artwork um, as compared to the coding, to be fair. Okay, so finish that. I think once we get to the end of June, we'll have a review done again. As she's getting better at this as well, I... I Assume that we'll have a, a better review already, even though this is very early days still. Um, there should still be loads of issues in terms of the code. We'll let these guys review. It's going to cost us about 15k. Yeah, so the art is doing pretty well, but of course there's lots of issues with the code and we'll, we'll iterate here. Bring her in and... So if it needs to release in July, I think she can keep going until at least uh, probably January before we promote this, or at least until the end of December. Um, oh, it seems like this guy has taken his leave. That's the only downside of having a one-person support team is in the month where he's on leave, nothing's really happening. So I'm going to let him finish this update and just work on the ticket queue for a bit so that nothing gets missed. He just needs to clear all of these tickets and, and verify all the updates. But the good news is you'll see through all of this, we're still profitable. Um, and look, I mean, the reason why we're profitable is because we're not going crazy on expenses. We haven't expanded to a bigger office yet. Uh, we're not at that stage yet. Um, you really want to make sure that you, you don't jump the gun there. Why is he not working? Let me just see what the issue is. It might be social... Okay, so it's hunger and social. I don't think we actually have anywhere. 
No, sorry, it's just hunger and energy. It's not social. Social's fine. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, he, he doesn't have anywhere to go and get lunch. This is not the best working conditions for somebody to be in. That we have to acknowledge. Uh, she can keep going. Yeah, so the artwork's done. Quite a bit of coding that still needs to happen in the alpha. Okay, this guy can start working on more fixes now. At least dealt with the queue. And we'll get out another update probably in the next month. But this is nice, we've been able to keep up with the support of just this one staff member throughout. Or at least one person in the support team, two people total. Uh, finish this update as well. Start working on the next one. I haven't really tried the subscription models yet. I don't know how those compare. I'm assuming if you're spending a ton of money on support and making sure that you're keeping people in the software and using the current version, maybe that'll amount to more money overall over time. Uh, but I haven't tried that for myself. I usually just sell the software. Okay, so we're in November here. She's getting towards the end of uh, what's required here. Okay, so we need to give him a bit of a raise, uh, like $52 increase. I think that's quite reasonable. He's really not asking for much from us. So let's see, end of December, and we're about 90% done on the code. I think this is okay. I think she can start working on the beta. Or should we give it one more month? Let's give it one more month. This is getting very close to as complete as we can get it, but I don't want to spend more time. We'll push out that update as well and start working on another one. Uh, and then at least she's got until July to work on the beta and, and fix some bugs. Um, and then again, what we'll probably do is we can keep supporting Picture Pro, but at a lower priority as soon as Picture Pro 2 is out. And hopefully we should be making more money from that then. And if that gives us enough, that's sort of what will enable the next phase, maybe moving to a bigger office, having a better development team or bigger development team. Um, but we still have a couple of months to go here until we're actually at release. At least if we go to a bigger office, uh, this hunger problem can be solved for him as well. It's, um, I wonder if there is a way, the problem is if we buy a vending machine or something like that, well, we, we still have this space here. Uh, so we don't even need to go to a bigger office yet. If we turn this into a bigger support room or something, yeah, but the layout of this office is not ideal. You see, we'd want some more walls or something in here. Anyway, let's keep going for a bit. I think I can maybe get him to help out on the beta. I mean, theoretically, but... Like I said, hunger is a, a serious concern for him right now. You can't, unfortunately, build any of the the items out in this area, as far as I know. Let's see if I'm wrong about that, because what we'd want here is just something like a vending machine. But no, that has to be inside, and that is noisy, uh, unfortunately, which will undermine productivity in other ways. So we're not going to get that right now. So we're in May still have June and July here to work on the 
beta version. Just get the maintenance services in again. And this will be the last month. It's actually good that he's on vacation this month because we don't want him on vacation in the, the month that we release this. So he can release that final update. That'll probably be the last one. She can continue with the bug fixing. Okay, and then we can actually release this. So let's see. Okay, well, at least we're doing a little bit better in terms of the uh, how well we're known. So that should help a bit. Now, on the support, for the first day, we want the core team here as well, and we want to prioritize this a bit over the old version because we're going to have more active users here. So let's see. Already we're up to 5,000. Now, if you remember when we released Picture Pro 1, the original, we had about 2,000 active users, so we're already doing better on sales. Okay, so he's working, he's still working on support for that one. Um, she is going to work on an update for us. So whatever bugs we discover during the first month of this release, she's going to fix for us. All right, so release that. We're gonna do the same thing for the next day. Perfect, so we're still getting good sales. We're up to about half a million here. And now we can see there's a lot more support tickets coming in. So it's a bit harder to keep up, but they're still perfectly capable of dealing with this, just the two of them. And again, we'll push out this update. And we just keep doing this for a while until things start stabilizing. Eventually we can cancel the support for the original Picture Pro. We only have 300 active users there at the moment. Again, send out the update and we just keep going this way for a bit. Still getting stable sales here, which is great. Over 10,000 active users. Let's see how we're comparing to the other software now. To the editors. Um, so, of course, we've just released. So, yeah, we've got about 10,000. Uh, we still have other software out there that's got over 300,000, but the next iteration that we do, we now have enough money that we can actually start expanding the team. Um, and this is the point that you want to get to. Once you're at this point, at least now you've got some money, you've got some options, and uh, so we'll just keep going like this. And... We release this update and from here again we're going to let the support team handle this by themselves so they will push the updates as well and we can probably stop the support for picture pro right now if the support team isn't able to keep up but this is basically the point where you'd want to start expanding so this is kind of step two uh, done so you've done your first iteration of the product where it's just you as the founder you've done your second one where you've had a support team here as well i'm not actually going to use this other chair because we are going to move into a bigger office right now that's going to make a bit more sense uh, given where we are right now and i'm just going to show how we can set that up and from that point on we can introduce some new features to the software and actually get to a place where we are going to be more competitive within the market. So this is going to be the last phase of this, uh, of this tutorial. Uh, I'm going to jump straight here and move the company into a slightly bigger building. And this will just be phase two. We'll probably only be in this building for one or two iterations of this uh, software. Uh, but I'm going to lease two offices here. One will be for our core team. So we'll put them over here and then we'll have our support team on this side. 
uh, and then we just need to we'll start with the desk so again uh, we create just like um should we go for the most expensive chairs here i don't think we're quite that flush of cash yet let's just go for these standard ones so get one of these in uh, put that in. We'll still give them the drawing tablets um, for all of these developers. I'm not saying that's the best option. That's just what I'm going for here. And uh, what else will they need? Definitely some lights next to them would help. And then we'll go for the cubicle walls as well. So just get these in. Uh, and then we can just sort of copy and paste. I love how simple it is to use the building tools in this game. I think that this game, considering that this is a single person development team, and I know this has been in development for a long time, but since this game started, it's actually been just so easy to build stuff. Uh, I love the way that the building tools work in this game. Let's also give them a bookshelf in the back here and a clock. And I think that should kind of do it. Yeah, I mean, this is a pretty good room in terms of acoustics, lighting, everything. And then we do something similar on the other side. Uh, it's not gonna be completely symmetrical, of course, because the door is on the other side, uh, but we still wanna give them a computer. This is the support room, so they'll have a phone. Uh, we can also get them like a nice plant or something. And we'll get some, again, cubicle walls here. Uh, because we're going to have multiple people in this room. Need to get them some chairs. Lighting. Perfect. I think that ought to do it. Just make sure we're selecting everything here. And again, we just duplicate. So put one over there, one over there as well. And get them a bookshelf over here. Clock. And let's just get maybe a plant for both of these rooms as well on the inside. Yeah, I think that ought to do it. The nice thing is now they can actually come out here and they can get food. So even if I change nothing else, it'll improve the productivity of the support team for now. Um, but then of course, what we wanna do is uh, we wanna expand on our development team. So, and here you also wanna be careful because we have over half a million dollars now, but we can burn that cash pretty quickly if we, go completely crazy on the development team. So maybe you want to get like a mid-range development team and develop them over time rather than hiring really expensive employees. So if we go ahead and we look for, so a couple of things, if I go into the team here, first of all, um, this June Sims, she is now going to be the leader for this team as well so that she can sort of take care of the employees that are gonna be in her team and we will then just hire some employees for her. Now, let's think about who's gonna be important here if we go for the next iteration of this software. So again, we're gonna go for the 2D editor. This is Picture Pro and yeah, so we're looking at, we need some programmers. That's probably the most important skill. If, if we have some combination of programming skill, art skill, and design skill, that'll be ideal um, so that we can just work quickly and get these iterations out. And that's what we're gonna try to hire for. So we need somebody who's a programmer first, maybe a designer or an artist second, uh, but preferably I'd want everybody to be able to work on design and like the salary range could be medium here. We don't want it to be high. Um, it may be premature right now. And let's look for people with good compatibility. So this person's independent, a born leader. Born leader doesn't really help us because this person's not gonna be leading the team. Um, and let's look at the rest of the skills. So this person can do 2D design, 2D programming. They can't do 2D art, which means that, I mean, there's less of that to do. So it may not be the end of the world, but it would be nice if we had somebody that could do that too. This person's kind of perfect. So he can do programming, design, and art. I think this is the sort of person that we wanna hire here. Um, he's a hypochondriac, so it means he's gonna be off some days, but that's okay. In the development team, this is more of an issue in the support teams because losing days there could mean that you're missing on tickets, but 
And the development team, I don't know if it really matters that much. So we're going to hire this guy. Uh, let's see if we can find one more person that will be good for this team. If we can get another person like that who can also do the art. This person can do 2D design, programming and art. And they're pretty good at system design um, and programming as well. This is actually this is a good skill set. He's got some hardware uh, design skill, which we don't really need. And uh, this is the person with the born leader trait, which also doesn't really help us. But if we wanted to shift him later on to be, into, uh, be in a leadership position or something, it's unlikely that we'll remember to do that. But let's go ahead and hire this person as well. I think they're pretty good. And... Uh, We'll get into the uh, the next version of the software. So, okay, the support team is completely occupied with this. If this one person from the support team can't keep up with the support in this case, uh, that's okay. Uh, we can just hire more. Um, but then we want to develop the next iteration of this software now. So, again, we're going to use Picture Pro 2. Um, or basically that IP. Uh, well, again, well, let's just look at what else we can add here. So we do want to add some more features now uh, that can get us up to... We don't want to waste too much interest, but if we have something that can get us up to like 90%, um, that would really help. Drawing tablet support, no. So I think this healing brush... There's some wasted interest, but at least it gets us up to 90%. I think that's pretty good. Um, what else do we need? Development teams. Uh, if we go into the... We still haven't developed a framework for this. Um, but we can probably do that in the next iteration. So again, I'm going to make this... Uh, we're going to sell this for 50. We will get the publisher to do the marketing and the printing again. Again. The marketing, it's massively useful that they're doing that for us. And we'll go ahead and start developing this. Actually, I should have waited until the next day before I did this because now we are going to lose one month of development time, but it's okay. I think with the bigger team, we can probably get away with that. Um, this person's asking for a raise again. That's all right. And... We'll have these guys uh, start work on that. So now at least this uh, support guy that we have doesn't have to be hungry all the time because he's actually got some vending machines out here and he can take lunch breaks. We can see his effectiveness is quite high. Um, and he's able to deal with all of the support requests and do the bug fixing, which is fantastic. Um, so we are actually after month one we're still making money, even with the bigger development team. And uh, I think this is where I'm going to end the tutorial, because this is basically all you need to know. So from here on, you just keep going. You can iterate on this next version of the software. You'll get even more sales. You'll probably have to expand the support team at that point some more. And then you can, of course, support the, or expand the development team, move into a bigger office again. And then you can start getting more development teams and start developing some of the software that requires more developers as well, because now you've got a really good steady stream of income. And you just sort of scale up from there and eventually you can start getting into creating operating systems as well, uh, creating hardware. Um, you can also build servers and rent out some of that server space. So there's a lot more that you can do from here. But this first step is really the most important to just get your company to a point where you have a stable income and you can use that to expand and have something to build from. But yeah, Software Inc, really great game. If you don't own it yet, I think it's really cheap, even if you're buying this one at the full price. So definitely do check it out. Let me know in the comments what you think about the game or any other tips that you have for new players. Please share those as well. And as always, if you like this kind of content, please do like and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next video.